Hey guys, uh, real quick video here. Um, I get asked a lot um, by people, how do I know if my system's working as it should be? That's a really good question because most people are completely oblivious to how much solar their, their system should have produced for the day. So there's a couple of things we need to know to work out if your solar system is working roughly as it should be. Okay, this is a baseline number. Okay, now what we need to know is the array size. Okay, so how many solar panels are on your roof by the size of them? So say you've got 400 watt panels and there's 10 of them, that's going to be a 4 kilowatt array. Alright, the other thing we need to work out is your peak sun hours for where you live. Now, you'll have to do an internet search to find that information, but if you live in Australia, you're in luck because I'm going to show you right now. Okay, I'll hold that still so you can pause it and zoom in. Alright, now we need the peaks on hours because what we're going to do is times that by the array size. Okay, so let's say uh, for this particular scenario we've got four hours of peaks on hours. So we're going to go four times four. Alright, four peaks on hours times four kilowatts gives me 16 kilowatts. Alright, now that's a baseline number. All right, your solar system should be making more than that. If it's making less than that, you've possibly got problems. Could be shading, could be an electrical problem. All right. Um, now, to get your daily production from your inverter, uh, a lot of solar, solar inverters do not have a screen anymore. Um, and if you do have an inverter with a screen, you're typically going to have three bits of information on that screen. You're going to have the power, which is what it's making right now. You're going to have the day, which is the amount of power it's made for the day. And you're going to have the total, plus other information, but that's usually what's on the home screen on your inverter. The one we're interested in is the daily production, and you want to get that just before your inverter shuts down um, of an evening, okay? Um, because obviously that's accumulating during the day and we need that figure. So cross-reference that against your... Um, now these, these peak sun hours vary from summer to winter, so you need to get your um, peak sun hours for your, um, for your region at your time of year, okay? And, uh, and cross-reference that. Do it in winter, do it in summer, okay? There's a lot of variables to it. Now, most solar systems where I live, the inverter will be 5 kilowatt, the solar array will be 6.6. .6. So you would absolutely expect more than 16 kilowatt hours, okay, because some of that power is going to get clipped. If, for example, you've got a solar system which is massively oversized, um, which does happen, then in summer, a lot of that solar energy, and this is mostly just in summer, is going to be clipped. So let's say we've got a 5 kilowatt inverter with a 10 kilowatt solar array. As soon as the power gets to 5 kilowatts, it's going to do what we call clip the power. So that will just straight line. So all this solar production here is lost. Okay. So once it starts clipping, it's only ever going to make 5 kilowatts. Why would you do that? Well, the reason is in winter and in summer, you get all this extra uh, production in the morning and the afternoon, okay? If you just had five kilowatts worth of solar on a five kilowatt inverter, then your power curve would look more like that. It would only just touch five. In fact, it wouldn't even get to five because there's losses, okay? Um, so that's why we oversize it, but I'm digressing. Um, if it is massively oversized, and I mean massively, not just that, then you probably go by the inverter capacity times peaks on hours to give again to give you a baseline. All right, there's so many variables with this: uh, the time of year, if it's cloudy, um, the tilt angle of your solar panels, the orientation of the solar panels. Um, but all up over the course of the day, that's a good baseline. All right. Uh, so you need to work that out for your particular system. Now, to get the solar system um, size, that information should be on your receipt or your design from your retailer, whoever sold you the system. Um, if you don't know what size your solar panels are, you can get up on the roof and use your uh, smartphone and poke it under the, 
panel and get a photo of the uh, label on the back of the panel which will tell you the wattage amongst um, many other electrical characteristics of that particular solar panel. Alright, so that's the manual way of doing it um, to work out whether your solar system is working as it should be. Now if you're still getting, ma if you're getting massive power bills and you've got solar installed, your solar is either too small or you're using more power than what your solar system can produce or you're using power at the wrong time of day. So let's say for example the household is empty during the day and then everyone comes home at night and turns stuff on then you're using power at night and drawing off the grid. All that solar production has gone out to the grid and um, you might get a feed-in tariff for it so you might get a bit of a credit for it. But you want to be using what power you can during the day to get the maximum benef financial benefits from your solar system. So try and use whatever power you can during the day. Set timers on appliances that you can set timers on, um, such as pool pumps, spas, you know, that sort of thing, dishwashers, dryers, um, and then try and conserve your energy at night. That way you're going to get the most out of it. All right. That's a good reason to get a battery, is uh, if you've got lots of excess solar, which would be going out to the grid, then you can store that energy in a battery and draw off it at night. Um, I have got another video on whether batteries are worth it, um, so if you go back through my videos you can have a look at that if you're pondering whether to get a battery or not. Um, so like I said, there is a much easier way to do all this, and this isn't a plug for this product, this is just um, simply a product that I use on all my residential grid connected solar systems. Um, because it tells me all this exactly for your particular solar system. Um, so when I set solar analytics up, I have to uh, enter all the parameters of your solar system. I have to enter uh, the orientation and the tilt angle for the solar panels. This is another chart that I use if I'm manually working stuff out, okay, um, because that greatly affects um, the production of your solar panels. So, for example, uh, this is specific to Perth, okay? This is the azimuth, so this is the orientation. So zero would be true north. So if I've got a solar panel facing true north and it's tilted at 30 degrees, it's going to be 100% efficient. Let's spin that panel around now so it's facing south. So at 180 degrees, 30 degree tilt angle, it's going to be making 65%. And then if we push it up even further, facing south, it's going to drop all the way down to 24%. Or, sorry, 25% efficiency. Um, so the tilt angle and the orientation makes a huge difference to the uh, production of the solar panel. That's why I say there's a lot of variables in this figure. That's just a good baseline, all right? Um, solar analytics, when I install that, I have to enter all these parameters. The, the type of solar panel, what orientation it's facing, the tilt angle, the inverter type, um, all that information and then solar analytics um, works it all out and it will tell you if your performance is within normal range. Okay, And if it falls out of that range then you get an email alert notification. So you don't need to do anything. If your solar system is not working as it should be, solar analytics will tell you. Okay. Um, it also, Solar Analytics also does lots of other wonderful things. Um, it can calculate your electricity bill, um, your solar savings, your general production, your performance. It will even tell you what size battery would best suit your household. Okay, let's have a quick look. Calculate my battery. Okay, so for this house, a 6 kilowatt hour battery would reduce their grid usage by 95%. Cool. We don't have to make assumptions, we don't have to do calculations uh, or hypotheticals, it's telling us. And it's telling us based on our solar production and our consumption. And that, when I say consumption, I mean when you're using power, that's specific to your household. Um, there's no assumptions made. All right, hope that's helped. Thanks for watching. Cheers.